Jesus' first public act, the healing of a man with a skin disease, the man who had leprosy. He was living out on the edge of town, outcast, untouchable, and Jesus healed him. That's in chapter 1. And then in chapters 2, 3, and 4, Jesus is going around casting out demons. And frankly, people are getting upset. It's upsetting for those whose lives are being disrupted. It's upsetting for those who don't understand what's happening. And the legal experts are explaining this, and they're saying, he's clearly possessed by Satan. The reason he's able to cast out demons is that he calls upon the name of the ruler of the demons. Even his family is upset with him. They've begun to think he is out of his mind. And in fact, his family shows up at a house where Jesus is teaching, and they try to stop him and take him away from them. But that's a story for a different day. Amid the growing controversy, Jesus continues to teach about the kingdom of God. And that's what we heard last week. We heard that story about the farmer who keeps sowing <laughs> the seed. And he sows the seed not just in the good soil, but everywhere. Because God's love is generous. It's relentless. It's, re it's reckless. And that's chapter 4. So then, after a long day of teaching, <laughs> Jesus and his disciples get into a boat to cross the lake. And they're going to go across to the other side. And the other side is where the Gentile go. They've been in Jewish territory. Now they're going across to the Gentiles. And as they are traveling across the water, late at night, a storm arises. And gale force winds are blowing. And the boat is being swamped as waves crash over the sides. And Jesus is in the boat, but he is sleeping, apparently at peace. And the disciples wake him up and they say, don't you care that we're drowning? And he speaks to the winds and to the waves and says, peace, be still. And the storm stops. And there is a great calm, and they say to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Who is this? Well, we know who this is. This is the one who spoke to the wind and the waves in the beginning. This is the one who spoke creation into being. And Jesus and his disciples arrive on the opposite shore, and now they're in Gentile territory. And immediately, Mark tells us, remember, that's Mark's favorite word, immediately. This man comes out of the tombs, and he's shouting at Jesus, and he says, don't torture me. Now, when we read about the things that have been done to this man, we can understand why he'd be afraid. It's pretty horrible, honestly, to think about the kind of life that he had. But then Jesus asks the man his name, and the response he gets is, My name is Legion, for we are many. And the text says, He pleaded with Jesus, Don't send us out of the region. You hear all those pronouns getting all mixed up in there? Is it him talking? Is it them talking? It's hard to separate the human under possession from the spirits that are possessing him. And if it's not strange enough yet, the next part of the story gets even weirder. We hear this story and we have a range of reactions. There's this herd of pigs, and Jesus sends the demons into the pigs, and the pigs run off the cliff and drown. And I know you animal lovers are out there thinking, what about those poor pigs? And I know there are those of you who are worried about the environment, and they think, how is the EPA going to clean up? all those dead pig carcasses in the water. And those of you who are business-minded are thinking, what about the owner of the pigs? In today's money, that's a quarter of a million dollars that just went over the cliff. Anybody think about the man himself who was just healed? Now, what are we to make of the crowd's reaction? Mark tells us that the people who witnessed this are pleading with Jesus to leave the region. They want him to go. Why? What are they so afraid of? Well, as disruptive as the man possessed by demons had been to their lives, they had sort of gotten used to it. There's a certain comfort in the status quo. And no pun intended here, but as human beings, we tend to prefer the devil we know to the unknown. 
What's happened here is that Jesus has upset the equilibrium. He has upended the social order, and no one is comfortable with it. The man had lived his entire life this way, and now that he's freed from bondage, he literally does not know what to do next. And he begs Jesus to let him come with him. But Jesus has something else in mind. Jesus sends the man out to testify to the power of God, to tell the story of his own incredible transformation, and to change people's hearts and lives. When we tell the story, when we share our stories of how we have been renewed and transformed and changed by the power of God, that is the most powerful tool we have to change others. Now perhaps you've heard it said, and you've probably even heard me say, that Jesus came to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. That those who preach the word of God are often called to do the same, to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And while I was searching for the origin of this phrase yesterday, I learned that it was originally coined in 1902 by an American journalist named Finley Peter Dunn to describe the crucial role that newspapers played in society. In Dunn's time, which was the turn of the 20th century, life was changing rapidly. The world seemed so much less simple than it had ever been before. And these were confusing times, and people counted on journalists to deliver the truth. Not necessarily what people wanted to hear, but what they needed to hear. So my question today is, who are the truth-tellers in our society? For that matter, who are the truth-tellers in our own lives? Where do we need to be comforted? Where do we need to be afflicted? What demonic forces are at work in our world right now that need to be called out by name? Fear? Greed? Hate? On a personal level, what is it in your life that has control over you? What do you need to be freed from? Where are you stuck? Are you ready for some good news at this point? Life in Christ offers freedom. Freedom from despair. Freedom from the limits we place on ourselves. Freedom from all the forces that defy God. You know, when Jesus performed his first act of healing, the man with leprosy, the man said to him, Lord, I know that if you choose, you can make me well. And Jesus said to him, I do choose. Be made well. And when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples, and the storm was raging, and they called to him, Lord, don't you care that we're drowning? Jesus said, of course I care. And he stopped the storm. And for the man who was healed, whose life was fundamentally changed forever, so much so that he had no idea what the next step was. He didn't know how to live from that point on. Jesus gave him a new purpose and a mission. So that leaves us with two questions. What do you want Jesus to do for you? And where is God calling you now? What is the story that you have to tell? As we ponder these things, I invite you to stand and we'll enter a time of prayer together. <clears throat> 